Hi, this is Robin Heppel from FuneralFutures.com. And today we're going to be looking at how being found in Google helps your client families and their friends. And we're going to do this with online obituaries, and we're going to be beating the newspapers at the same time. You see, for the longest time, we've always had to rely on other modes of media to get the message out about the service information, whether it be the newspaper or the radio station or what have you. But what I want to do is I just want to show just a basic time chart of how the information disseminates from the time of death to the time of the services. And this is just uh, a sample because I know that every situation is different and different towns and different regions have different schedules, but this is a generalization. So the death occurs is the first event, and obviously that happens on day one. During the first day that the death has occurred, the next of kin informs the immediate family, and probably they're going to phone the funeral home and make the first call. As the day goes, goes towards the end of the day, uh, the word starts to spread that the death has occurred to the various friends. And probably by the second day, the funeral arrangements have been made, and Probably by the end of that day, the obituary notice will be confirmed if it hadn't been confirmed at the arrangements. And then, since it, it has to wait to get into the newspaper, usually the soonest that it can get in would be for the morning of the fourth day. And you can see that word spread about the death towards the end of day one, and now it's day four, and people can finally find the information about the service. And then if you've been practicing the, the best practices for online obituaries, in those newspaper notices it says, condolences for the family may be offered at yourfuneralchapel.com, and you'll start receiving condolences through your online obituaries on your website. This is also the time, too, that family and friends, since now they know the service time, they can start ordering flowers. And let's just say then the following day is uh, visitation, maybe in the afternoon or the evening, or, or maybe there's a prayer service in the, in the evening. And then on day six would be the day of the service and followed by the interment or cremation and, and reception. And once it's all over, the funeral home has received all these condolences and they'll pass them over to the family. But what I want to illustrate is that it took almost two full days from by the time the word spread of the death to the friends towards the end of the first day to the beginning of the fourth day that they were able to find the information about the service. And nowadays, people have Google at their fingertips. We go to Google and search for things immediately. We, now we need to have our information immediately. And people have actually told me, Rob, it's frustrating. I want to know the service information. I don't know what funeral home's holding the service. And I search on Google and I can't find anything. And that got me thinking, well, maybe we're not doing a good job getting those obituary notices that are on our website up soon enough. And for some reason, Google's not finding them the way they should. You see, because if we're doing our job right, we can actually shortcut the time that the information gets out there. And it will actually give us an advantage over the newspaper so if we're able to say to the family at the time of the arrangements in day two and get that obituary confirmed even at the arrangements, we can then upload that obituary notice to our website. And if it can get indexed in Google in a short period of time, then we have a day and a half head start on that pesky newspaper. Now, before I ever put any of this stuff on you, I just... As you know, I don't just bring things out of the air. I test them first, and I want to make sure that my theories are, are right before I share them. So what I did, I wanted to do a little case study. And so on December 9th at 10.07 a.m., I searched for this gentleman's obituary notice. Now, I knew it wouldn't show up because uh, the funeral home hadn't uploaded the obituary notice yet. Then what we did was we uploaded the obituary notice, and I checked, and I checked a few times, but finally, 
After 27 minutes, the obituary notice appeared in Google. And not only did it appear, it appeared number one in Google. So anyone looking for that obituary notice would have been able to find it if they used Google. Because 80% of, of the population of North America has internet access. And 60% of those people use Google. So can you see where this is getting important? Because I don't want to have you or your client families or their friends have to rely on the newspaper to provide the information to the masses. You have that ability at your fingertips. So what I want you to do is I want you to run a couple tests yourself. So go to, before you're to upload your next obituary notice, go to Google and search for the deceased name. And if it's a common name, then put the word obituary beside it. So instead of just searching for Robin Heppel, search for Robin Heppel obituary. And then create a Google alert and you can go to google.com slash alerts. And it's going to actually allow you to insert your email address. And as it's searching the entire internet, whenever it comes up with that search term that you inserted, it will send you an email and it's free. Then upload that obituary notice. And after that, maybe go back and uh, make sure you're checking your Google alerts and the email that comes in. Also prefer perform periodic Google searches as well. Now I'm not going to leave you hanging there either. I'm going to give you some tips on to make sure how you can get your pages indexed in Google quicker as well. And indexed means basically when you go to the library and there's that big card catalog, you can actually go and, and use that card catalog and they're usually index cards and they tell you where the book is. Well, Google's no different. It's just a big card catalog of the library of information on the internet. And, but they don't know the information. They don't have it on their own virtual index card until they found it. So what you need to do are these four things. You want to have a site map, an XML site map registered with the search engines. And you don't s submit your URL to the search engines like we used to. All three main search engines, Google, Yahoo, and MSN want you to use sitemaps the sitemap would be sitemap.xml and we'll take a look at an example here shortly. There's these two websites, make sure you write them down, sitemaps.org and that gives you all the information about how sitemaps work and you can even go to xml-sitemaps.com and you can enter in your website address and it will create a sitemap for you and then you can upload it to the internet. I would recommend that the name of the obituary is listed on your home page because the search engines are going to come to the home page of your website first. And hopefully you don't have a landing page or a splash page, but that you actually have real meaty content on your home page with a listing of the most recent obituaries. You want to use proper title tags and proper URL names. All four of those will help you get indexed in Google faster. So let's take a look at some examples. So here we are at the Bell Burnaby site and here's the gentleman's name that we did the little case study for. And so you can see that the names are here on the home page and they're just in reverse chronological order. So as a new one comes on, it comes to the top and it get, these get pushed down. Uh, but you can see all of the obituaries if you click here. So that's one key component. The next key component that I talked about is how is the title of the page? So here in the tab, you can actually see this is the title of the page. So if it's saying something like just your funeral home's name, and it doesn't have anything else. That's just a poor job of how the website was made. So every page should actually be titled differently. So here we can see obituary four and the gentleman's name and then the category obituaries and then Bell and Burnaby Funeral Chapel. So that's the title. 
Next is the URL. I'll scroll along, and you can see this web page actually has the gentleman's name in the title. That's going to help as well. And a good example of this is that if we look at the different pages here that are indexed by Google, and this is a fairly new site, and they already have 231 pages indexed by Google. And what you do is you just go to Google and type in site, and then colon, and then www.bellburnaby.com, and press search, and it will show all of the pages on this one website that are indexed. And you can see that all of these pages are named differently. If your pages are all named the same, if it was just Bell and Burnaby Funeral Chapel, Bell and Burnaby Funeral Chapel, Bell and Burnaby Funeral Chapel, that would be some sloppy uh, web development work. So here, though, is a good example of how pages should be named. Now, let's go and look at the sitemap. So here's an example of the sitemap, and here it is here, just bellburnaby.com forward slash sitemap.xml. And here's a nice looking sitemap page. And you can see that it has all the different pages here. So the like the Google bot just has to go to this page and it can see all of these pages. And it doesn't have to go through the entire site. It can actually just scan this one sitemap and know if there's any new pages or if any pages have been deleted. And that's how you can help the search engines index your pages quicker. There are other ways to help inform your community of the upcoming services. And if you've listened to any of my, my tutorials before, I've preached this many times about viral marketing and using these viral marketing tactics and promotional strategies to help get the word out. The first one is to send an email immediately after the arrangements and provide a link to that obituary notice back to your website, back to that specific obituary notice, and put a small note in there letting the, the family know that to help them out, they can then send this email or forward this email along to all their friends and family. Now you've actually done a service for them because you're making it easier for them to find information. The other thing that you're doing that will help both you and them out is that if you're offering flowers on your on your website that they can be conveniently purchased right there you're just providing a convenient location for them to make a purchase also using a what they call a telefriend script so that someone goes to the website and they see the obituary notice and then they could go oh well I bet you I bet you Patrick wants to know about that and I can put in Patrick's email address and name and write a short comment and send it. And then that'll send him an email with a link back to the obituary notice. So that's a telefriend script. Another thing is a subscribe to obits. And this is great for small communities. So people could actually just get an email every time there's a new obituary posted. Or if someone leaves a condolence, they could actually subscribe to those condolences of that individual and they'll get notified when any other condolences are uploaded to the website. So we can go into those in greater detail later, but I just wanted to make sure that since we're kind of on this topic that I share those strategies with you as well. And again, I'm just bringing this information because a lot of people ask me these questions and they don't always get this, the help that uh, they probably should from their web development companies. So I'm here to offer that support. If you need any consultation uh, with your website or you're interested in what are your other options out there, feel free to uh, send me an email, give me a phone call, or visit the website at funeralfutures.com. This is Robin Heppel.